Good happy Saturday evening. I'm Riley King and welcome to this evening news and weather update right here on the Riley King Radio Network. Let's get started right now. First up, FBI assisting in hostage situation at Texas Synagon. Authorities said a man took hostages Saturday during services at a Texas synagogue where the suspect could be heard ranting in a live stream before the feed cut out. We will keep you updated as we get more information into our newsroom. Firefighters battle Alstead home fire in bitter cold. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. Maggie Hassan worked with both parties to ease delivery of goods and reduce costs. We're also following breaking news out of Alstead. Crews are battling an active home fire. This is on Main Street. This is new video into our newsroom. Firefighters tackling the blaze in extreme conditions. The cold is just terrible. Five below zero in Alstead this morning. The fire department could not confirm any injuries or the extent of damage at this point or the cause of the fire. Police asking people to avoid the area. Okay, there you go on that video and that report. Proof of COVID-19 vaccine requirement for most indoor public spaces in Boston begins today. Let's take a listen to that video from WCVB. Walmart, America's largest, is hiring. Earn up to $28 per hour plus benefits working at Walmart's distribution center. Get a $5,000 sign-on bonus, but hurry, you must be hired before January 31st. Apply today online or text DC to 240240. Watkins welcome. At Daryl's Corner Bar and Kitchen in the South End, the owner isn't worried about the new work that comes with checking vaccination status. It's fairly easy lifting. Again, it's just an additional ask at the front door. Starting Saturday, restaurants, gyms, arenas, and theaters in Boston will be required to check that everyone 12 and older has at least one shot. It's a hassle to check people out. But the owner of Galleria Umberto in the North End says he doesn't have the staff to comply with the new city mandate, so he's no. moving to takeout only. We only got like five guys working. We don't have any waitresses to check people coming in. It's an important move to keep our community safe. Even though the requirement comes as it appears the state's moving beyond the Omicron peak, Dr. Catherine Gergen Barnett says the focus should be on the long term. We're not just talking about what's happening now. We're talking about what's going to happen in six months. I feel comfortable because I know that others are being more responsible for themselves and others around them as well. Some customers say the mandate puts them at ease and some business owners hope the move can help bring in more customers. I don't know where the end of the tunnel is, truthfully, um, but it's just another step in the progress of, of, of getting back to some. And the next step in this vaccination mandate comes February 15th. That's when you're going to have to show proof of full vaccination. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. New Hampshire ice castles open this weekend. Let's take a listen to that video from WBZ. Transforms into a winter wonderland. The ice castles are now open. There are hundreds of thousands of icicles, sculptures, tunnels, and slides. And new this year, a winter fairy village and an ice sculpture garden. General admission tickets start at twenty dollars. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And that is a look at your news this evening. Now let's take a look at your weather update. Here is meteorologist Jacqueline Thomas with your weather forecast. Welcome to the Giganet. Fidium Fiber has arrived. Say hello to better, faster fiber internet delivered. 
Thanks for watching. I'm meteorologist Jacqueline Thomas. Hopefully you've been able to stay warm with the frigid conditions that we've had out there through the day today. As we head through the night tonight, it is still going to stay cold, but then all eyes are on our next storm with impact weather on the way and alert as we head towards the holiday on Monday. So another cold night as lows once again fall back below zero across the area. That storm arrives Monday with a chance for snow, a mixed terrain, and likely bringing tricky traffic. So wind chill alerts, what do we have left? Well, as we head through the evening hours, there's still a wind chill advisory for northern New Hampshire through Coas and northern Grafton counties where wind chills could still feel like they're in the 20s below zero right through the evening and that's until midnight early Sunday. The actual air temperature as we head through the overnight period will be below zero across most of the state tonight. So keep that in mind if you do have to head out. While the wind will be subsiding and the wind chills will not be as bad, the air temperature is certainly still going to be cold with single digits and teens below zero across most of the state. Look at those teens below zero up north. Feels like temperature as we head through the overnight into Sunday morning, it's still going to feel like it's below zero zero if you're stepping out the door first thing tomorrow, but then we rebound a bit during the day. The actual air temperature climbs into the 20s and with those winds subsiding, it'll feel like the teens and 20s as we head through Sunday afternoon. So that is the good news. We do get a little bit of an improvement and we'll see a good amount of sunshine as we head through Sunday as well with those temperatures climbing back into the 20s. Satellite and radar quiet. So even though it's been cold, it is at least quiet out there and we've seen a bright sky today, but well down to the south and west, you can see that next storm system churning around Memphis. That's what's going to bring us our next chance for some snow, a little bit of mixing and some rain as we head towards the upcoming holiday on Monday. And ahead of this storm, we do have a winter storm watch across most of the state of New Hampshire, except for Rockingham County. So you head towards Seacoast and just south from Manchester to Nashua where it does look like there'll be a changeover to rain so snowfall totals there maybe just a little bit less. So here's what this looks like at this point as we head into Monday it's going to arrive late Sunday overnight into Monday morning. So Sunday is going to be quiet it's going to be dry through the day tomorrow and then you'll notice the increase in clouds as we head through Sunday evening from the south and then here's 1 2 a.m. Monday you'll notice snow showers beginning to arrive from the south. Now, now, notice off to the east here, this little bit of green, that's indicating rain while these blues and purples indicate the snow. So this mixing line in pink here is coming very close as we head into early Monday. So that's what we're going to be watching to see just how far this mixing line sets up inland because that's going to affect the snow totals that we get from this system. Here's 6 a.m. Monday. Notice most of the state is featuring snow, but we're already starting to see a little changeover as you head south and east. Now, I think this may be a little bit quick with that changeover because our temperatures have been so cold and will be very cold as we head into the start of the storm early Monday morning. So we'll likely see snow linger even south, I think, uh, beyond that time period. But by 8, 9 o'clock, we could start to see a little bit of that changeover south and east. And as we head through the day, that mixing line will push a little bit further inland. So you'll see a changeover from the snow to rain and there may be a little bit of sleet in between. The good news is that this time around we aren't expecting widespread freezing rain to be a concern, but travel will be tricky, especially north where the snow is expected to linger as snow throughout the duration of this event. And that's going to mean higher snowfall totals, messier roadways. And even as you head south, initially there will be a few inches of snow from Concord up to the lakes region. So keep that in mind. By Monday afternoon, this tapers off. There'll likely be lingering snow showers across the mountains and up north, and that'll continue into Monday evening as the system moves away. So what are we looking at as far as snowfall totals go? Well, you head south and east where that rain moves in sooner, and you're going to see lesser amounts, one to two inches, as you head Manchester south and east. But 
even from Manchester to Concord, there could be a difference of two, three, even four inches in spots because of how tightly and how close that mixing line is going to come. So there's going to be a really sharp cutoff with who sees what as far as snowfall totals go, depending where that mixing line moves into. So Concord could pick up a few inches, and as you head towards the Sunapee area and up towards Laconia, we're looking at a good handful of inches of snow coming down before we get into any of that mixing. But spots as you head further north and west, including Plymouth, Conway, up to Berlin, we're looking at 6 to 12 inches of snow from the system where it stays all snow as we head through Monday. So in the seven day forecast, we have an alert for Monday with this next storm system moving in. And you'll notice too that as we head through the rest of next week, we do get back into some sunshine at times, a couple of snow showers late Wednesday, early Thursday, before we see that very cold air settling back in again towards the end of the week. Okay, and there you go on that weather update from meteorologist Jacqueline Thomas. And that does it for this evening news weather update right here on the Riley King Radio Network. Thank you for listening to this evening news and weather update. Have a great evening and see you tomorrow for another news and weather update right here on the Riley King Radio Network. Good night, everyone.